For tens of thousands of years, coho salmon were abundant and thrived in the creeks and streams known as tributaries of the Russian River. During this time, the ecosystem made up by the river, forests, and ocean maintained a healthy balance, offering great diversity of fish and wildlife. Coho salmon were a critical part of that balance. The Russian River watershed is critically important to coho salmon and steelhead, 1,500 square miles in size. It has almost 200 tributary streams. The Russian River and its tributaries make up our watershed, which extends from the headwaters north of the Ukiah downstream to the Pacific Ocean at Jenner. For centuries, Native Americans living throughout the watershed depended upon the annual runs of salmon for food. An aunt of mine used to tell stories of being almost able to walk across Dry Creek because the river was so red with salmon, coho salmon. Coho salmon are a vital indicator of the health of our streams, the Russian River, the Pacific Ocean, and even our forests and grasslands. Also known as silver salmon, coho become bright silver in color as they migrate out to sea to feed and grow. Upon their return to fresh water for spawning, the adult coho change color again, especially the males, turning a dark red. The Russian River was once home to many thousands of coho salmon. Early settlers reported thousands of coho salmon migrating upstream in the fall. But today, the story is much different. There are few wild coho left in California. Anytime there's a drought or poor logging practices, poorly constructed roads, that all has a, an effect on their freshwater environment. Coho salmon on this watershed are listed as endangered. The numbers had steadily been declining and they got to a point where without some type of intervention, they would disappear from the system. Extinct means that population of fish is gone from its range and will not be coming back. For thousands of years, the coho salmon have returned to the Russian River from salt water. They bring those nutrients into the freshwater system when they die as adults. Those nutrients are cycled throughout the entire ecosystem. That cycle of nutrients that is critical to the ecosystem has been broken for close to 50 years now. So why have the coho nearly disappeared? Salmon need water but so do people. Water supports a pretty large population. It also supports a thriving agricultural community, supports industry. For a long time, we didn't realize that every drop of water we use means there is less available for coho and other wildlife. As a result, many of the tributaries that coho use for spawning would dry up in the summer and fall. That wasn't good news for the coho salmon. In order to provide water for people and to protect against destructive floods, and to create places to swim and play. We built dams across the Russian River and its tributaries. The dams created barriers to migrating salmon, cutting off areas of habitat where salmon would normally spawn and grow. Salmon and ocean-going trout called steelhead are anadromous, which means they are hatched in fresh water, migrate to the ocean, and then return to the freshwater streams of their birth to spawn as adults. So coho salmon actually require three types of habitat during their life. Cold freshwater streams for spawning and juvenile rearing, brackish or semi-salty water in the estuary when they are migrating to the ocean as smolts, and salty ocean water as adults. Changes in freshwater and ocean conditions, along with overfishing, threaten the populations of all migrating fish. But compared to the Chinook salmon and steelhead, which are also found in the Russian River watershed, Coho salmon are the most vulnerable to these changes. They only live three years. They spend uh, about a year and some change in months in freshwater. They go to the ocean after that and they come back as three-year-olds and reproduce. That's their only time that they spawn. In 1997, several agencies became alarmed at the rapid decline in the numbers of coho salmon returning to the Russian River to spawn. They determined that without immediate action, coho salmon would disappear from the watershed for good. Their united action in capturing the last remaining coho made possible the 2001 creation of the Russian River Coho Salmon Captive Broodstock Program at the Warm Springs Don Clausen Fish Hatchery. Biologists went out and collected just about 300 young of the year fingerling coho salmon and brought them into the hatchery. As it turned out, the following year when they went back out to try to rescue another year class of coho salmon, 
they did not find any. In this state-of-the-art facility, Yonkoho salmon are raised to adulthood in large circular tanks filled with water from Lake Sonoma. This captive population, called brood stock, is carefully raised to promote proper growth and development. Each fish receives a pit tag, which is a passive integrated transponder, and it essentially gives each fish in our program a name. And when it comes time to spawn, we know which fish is which, so we can spawn according to this genetics breeding matrix. That matrix includes DNA analysis, which allows for selective pairing of male and female fish to preserve the wild characteristics of the species. Eggs and sperm are collected from breeding age coho and biologists work against the clock to fertilize the eggs and carefully place them onto climate-controlled trays to promote ideal incubation conditions. After the eggs hatch, the fry are placed into tanks and fitted with identification tags, and once they are viable size, they are released into the Russian River watershed. 100% of the fish that we release receive coated wire tag in the snout. So if that fish is ever encountered in any other sampling effort in the watershed, crews from all the various agencies know to scan that fish to see if it came from our program. There's a number of different things that they do to track these fish throughout the watershed. And one of those things is snorkel surveys. And they go out there, hands and knees, crawling through the, these streams. And they're doing presence absence surveys, looking for wild fish prior to our release efforts. It's not your standard release methodology. We're not just dumping all of these fish into one area. So we use these water-filled barrels that we've sort of outfitted with harnesses that allow us to hike these fish back into native habitat throughout the watershed. We get to hand pick the best possible habitat to help ensure survival every step of the way. And we're literally counting a specific number of fish into a pool based on the, the quality of that pool. And our whole goal is to reestablish natural runs of coho salmon, sort of let the fish take over. After the fish are released, biologists are able to follow the movements of the fish throughout the watershed using advanced monitoring techniques. Spawner surveys take place every winter where crews will hike these streams looking for adults spawning in the creeks. They also run downstream migrant traps so that we can get estimates of smolt abundance, how many fish are leaving a creek and heading out to the ocean. This allows biologists to evaluate the program's release efforts and to estimate the number of adults returning to the watershed to spawn each year. The data provides scientists important information about the health of Russian River coho and guides decision-making for future improvements to the program. I think all of the efforts that we do at the hatchery um, and all these supplementation efforts have to go hand in hand with habitat enhancement and habitat protection. Partnerships of government agencies, community groups, and landowners are coming together to help restore local creeks to more natural conditions. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and the Sonoma County Water Agency are responsible for the Warm Springs Dam and together are spearheading a habitat restoration effort in Dry Creek. Now we've just started these habitat enhancement projects in 2013 and 2014. Ultimately, we hope to construct six miles of habitat enhancements within 10 years, which is nearly half of the stream. We're literally trying to rebuild a system that no longer can support this species into something that can support the species. Mother Nature is extremely resilient given the opportunity she can fix most of the things we screw up. Thanks to the Broodstock program, habitat restoration and landowner involvement, we are already making a difference. Even when we were doing excavation, you know, it was, it was not like you would, you know, build a slope three to one or you would um, have certain precise features of work. This was more of a delicate carving, I guess you'd say, maybe with a paintbrush. We had a spawning pair of coho. They were nesting just right up here in this, at the upper reaches of this riffle before it goes into the trees there. It's a remarkable thing to watch. The program started in 2001. Ten years later, we saw over 500 adults return to the Russian River watershed, and I think people were really optimistic. And unfortunately, in the winter of 2013, 2014, we just had a really poor water year. We actually saw a decline. You know, we can put all this effort into this program, but if Mother Nature doesn't cooperate with us, then it's gonna be, it's gonna be a long road. The goal is to one day see thousands of coho salmon returning to spawn each year. 
but the Coho's ultimate recovery won't be possible unless everyone participates, including you. We're not in this business for, for the paycheck. I mean, we're in this because we like what we do. We have a passion for the environment. And I think, you know, it takes people with this dedication um, in all facets of, what, of life. I mean, not just fisheries, um, but it takes that dedication to really make a difference out there. Coho salmon need cold, clean water to survive. So to protect this important species, we all need to conserve water. Farmers and rural residents are improving the ways water can be safely taken and stored at off-stream storage sites while preserving stream flow. NOAA and other agencies are currently working together on improved frost protection methods. One day, farmers will protect fragile young grape buds from spring frosts using less or no water at all. Sonoma County is for all intents and purposes, the closest thing to heaven on earth. Each of us plays a key role in keeping Sonoma County's waterways clean. You can help by keeping the watershed clean, conserving water, free of litter, and by preventing soap, grease, and other pollutants from being washed down driveways and flowing into storm drains that lead to creeks. You can also get involved by volunteering to restore and maintain your local stream. And remember, please speak up for the coho. I really hope my kids can, you know, head out to the river and see plentiful numbers of, of salmon out there.